Welcome in to the BCU Wildcat Basketball Insider. We're shooting on location today at the campus of Bethune-Cookman University. I'm Nolan Alexander, joined by our assistant AD for communications, Brian Harvey. And today we give you an inside look at Cottrell Pope, the nation's leader in offensive rebounds. Head coach for our women's team, Vanessa Blair Lewis, had her jersey retired at her alma mater, Mount St. Mary's. And then an inside look at what we do at the Cat Eye Network, our student production that gives live broadcasts to both men's and women's basketball. Brian, we started out with a lot of live broadcasts in the month of February, a huge home month for both the men's and the women's, and they put on a show at Moore Gym and got on a roll. No doubt about it. This team has really started to surge over the last couple of weeks. And I tell you, Nolan, I don't know if it's being at home and more, which I'll put it down to that, or if it's the fact that this team is really starting to gel, both men and women. I tell you, Chasmy Brown has really become a double-double machine, and then Clotrell Pope, you just said it, another double-double machine. But Thune Cookman has really become that rebounding, scoring, assist, three-pointer, dunk, exciting place to be at Moore Gym. And I, you know what, Nolan? I think the biggest thing is that this team is starting to believe a little bit. They are starting to believe as the Wildcats hit the road for the latter part of the month of February. But uh, to touch on Clotrell Pope real quick, at the time of this show, he has 17 double-doubles. That's second in the nation. He doesn't do it just one game, but what does it speak to his ability to do this on a consistent basis? It speaks to the fact that this young man puts in the work in the gym. He gets in there, he hustles, he kind of, you know, does the dirty things. He'll get down low, he'll go up high, he pushes guys out, muscles his way in. And that's a guy that you look at and you think, he's not that Sean Trez, just gaudy muscle. He's just muscle as far as right here in that heart. Mm -hmm. He's muscle in the fact that he really believes that I get every rebound. He thinks that everything that comes off that rim, he's going to get. You know what? He's not too far off. It's like a young Kevin Garnett. He is. He really is. He's the guy that can step back, hit the shot. He can also post you up. So let's not forget the scoring part. You get a double-double, you got to score some points. And this is a guy that really enjoys banging on the board. Mm -hmm. You don't see that nowadays. Everybody wants to shoot the three ball and look pretty. Dirty, physical guys like this are starting to become a norm again. You know what? Clotrell Pope could be a trendsetter. And then on the women's side, Angel Golden just became the winningest player in BC Wildcat basketball history. She's done it night in and night out, and a great honor for her. You know what? This young lady has put in the work throughout four years. She's gotten in the gym. She showed off her prowess as far as scoring is concerned. But you know what? She's also just a wonderful, humble, young individual. This is a young lady that takes pride in what she does, but also it's real quiet, it's real passive, doesn't say a whole lot. She's a silent assassin, you know what? That speaks volumes as far as her game. She doesn't talk trash out there, she doesn't do a whole lot of brash, and, and this is me, she does it all for the team, but you know what? 20 points, 30 points, 30 some points a night, mm -hmm. she does it every single night, and consistency is her game. You spoke about the team starting to believe in themselves, and a big part of Bethune-Cookman is what happens inside these doors mm -hmm. in Whitehall as far as belief. This campus really is the heart and soul of BCU. No doubt about it, and being right here at this place is symbolic. This is where it all started. This is where when you look at the, the Cat Eye films and Dr. Bethune's walking in and she says, I am the dreamer and you've interpreted my dream, this is the place that she goes in. So right here, this is the faith. This is everything. This is the hub of Bethune Cookman right here. And you know what? When you come by here, you feel that kind of essence of Dr. Bethune. You feel the past presidents that have sat in that office, those that have walked this very path and gone through those doors that we came out of. This is Enter to Learn, the part to serve right here. You'll see more of the campus. You'll hear more of the stories. It's coming up next. This is the BC Wildcat Basketball Insider. The dance starts here. The 2019 MEAC Basketball Tournament is back at Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. It's six days of nonstop action as your favorite MEAC men's and women's basketball teams battle it out on the court for the right to play in the big dance. Get your tickets today at MEACHoops.com, member institutions and Ticketmaster. March 11th through the 16th at Scope Arena as the road to the big dance goes through Norfolk. In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, 
Success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game, they're playing to win at life. Because games end, but life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. Welcome back into the BCU Wildcat Basketball Insider. We're joined by the big man on campus here at the Quad. It's Clotrell Pope. Pope has done an outstanding job in his first season with the Wildcats. He leads the nation in offensive rebounds. He's second in rebounding average, and he's a big reason why Bethune Cookman is top 10 in rebounds this season. Pope, at the time of this taping, I know it's going to change. You've got 17 double doubles in the season. You're having one of the best single seasons in Wildcat history, and you're all doing it. In your first season, when you set out last season, what were you envisioning what the next year was going to be like for you? Uh, I really, I just wanted to see how can I help my team get better. I, I watched them, they had fun, you know, so I still like see what, what part was it missing. It was me. I, I know it's tough to sit out a season, not be able to play, but practice. How did you grow in your knowledge of the game watching BC play? Uh, I grow. It was, it was fast, and it was like, I adapted real quick. I, I used to practice with him, mm -hmm. so I was looking at the strength, what I needed to work on, and the weakness. So when that season, when summer hit, then I put all that together. You were ready to go chomping at the bit in preseason practice, weren't you? Uh-huh. What was it like the first time you took the floor in a uniform in a regulation game? Great. Should be good. Mm -hmm. So you started out as a bit of a late bloomer in basketball. I know now with the AAU circuits, people are going a third, fourth grade, they're starting out, but you didn't pick up a basketball until what, ninth grade? Ninth grade. Why was that? I didn't, I didn't like it. Yeah? <laughs> I didn't know, like, uh, growing up, I didn't know, like, there was, there was something I needed to do to, like, feed my family. So if my coach sat me down, uh, he told me, like, you good at what you do. So. I just took it and ran with it. So is a high school coach approaching you as I, to why no, you play? Now, you told me you also play football too, mm -hmm. right? What positions? Uh, DN, wide receiver, safety, and quarterback. So what was it like when you had to tell your high school coach, hey, I'm trying this basketball thing, and I believe it or not, I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he knew, he knew I was good at basketball, but it was just like I didn't want to sit out like – get lazy like you know, mm -hmm. it's like a process when you when you sit out a year why not play both sports when you an athlete mm -hmm. that's how I took it and so you went through four years of high school at Northport Alabama Tuscaloosa County High School and then you met an important man in your life Dominique Taylor who you have followed at his different stops and now here to BCU what was it like when you first met coach Taylor uh, I think I was at Chipola and I got a good with uh, a guy on my team, man coach down, man coach down, side down, out. And we just clicked from there. Yeah. <laughs> good from God, I guess. Yeah? Yeah. What makes Coach Taylor special to you? Yeah, different ways, like you know, when I need somebody to talk to him, he's, just, he's like a big brother. Mm -hmm. Was it easy going from Chipola in Florida to southeastern Illinois in a small town that you may not have known much about? Uh, it was, but then again, I know at the end of the day, like I had I had somebody that there with me that mm -hmm. I could talk to. Mm -hmm. And then why BC? Why'd you pick the Wildcats? It's, it's like from growing up, I never thought about the big stage. Like, like you don't have to go big to play to get known. Mm -hmm. So why not? 
<laughs> HBCU. Yep, and now you're here at Bethune Cookman. This is your second year on campus at BCU. How have you liked being at an HBCU? Oh, uh, it's great. Uh, a lot of people. It's, just, it's fun. Mm -hmm. and, and I know you told me before, it's sense of a family, right? Uh huh. And then you're a family man yourself. You've got two young kids, you've got a couple young daughters uh, that have really been embraced by the team. How has that helped you? Great. Yeah, my little girl, Libby, is just having fun with the team. She missing the, the guys all the time. Like, it's just fun. Bunch other, bunch other uncles for her. Yeah, <laughs> little uncles. <laughs> <laughs> and we're more than the halfway point through the MEX season. Like I said, yeah, you're having a monstrous year. You're now top 10 in rebounding in Bethune Cookman history on pace to set the Division I record mark here at BCU. What's the ultimate goal this year? Make it to the tournament. Mm -hmm. And what would that mean? It means a lot to like the community, uh, BCU, myself, coach. You know, it, it's just a lot if we make it. Terrell Pope, he's the big man on campus. Pope, we got to lift you at what, six foot nine? Yes, sir. And then what's your wingspan? Seven three. Show the camera, seven foot three wingspan. <laughs> Seven foot three, Clotrell Pope. This is not seven foot three at all, but stay tuned to the BCU Wildcat Basketball Insider as we continue to give you an inside look at the Wildcats. The dance starts here. The 2019 MEAC Basketball Tournament is back at Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. It's six days of nonstop action as your favorite MEAC men's and women's basketball teams battle it out on the court for the right to play in the big dance. Get your tickets today at MEACHoops.com, member institutions and Ticketmaster. March 11th through the 16th at Scope Arena as the road to the big dance goes through Norfolk. In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game, they're playing to win at life. Because games end, but life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. And we welcome you back into the BC Wildcat Basketball Insider. Nolan Alexander here with head coach for the women's program, Vanessa Blair Lewis. Coach, you had a special opportunity when the team made its trip to Baltimore in the month of January. It coincided with your jersey retirement yeah. at Mount St. Mary's, your alma mater. And your team got to witness it. You had your family and friends there. We saw all the Blair t-shirts. How special was that for you? Uh, that was a culmination of something that was, it was earned. It wasn't given, hmm. and it was fabulous. And and to top it off, to have two great wins, an overtime win, but just to have not just the team there, but my family and the Mount St. Mary's family, who mm -hmm. has, you know, kind of raised me from 17 years old on up, and it was just a beautiful event. Did you have a flood of memories going back there from your playing days and what it was like to be a student athlete at the Division One level? Oh yeah, as soon as I walked in, it still smelled the same. You know how you have different <laughs> smells that take you different places? Mm -hmm. It smelled exactly the same. The whole field house atmosphere, the Mount Maniacs in the back screaming. It was, it, it was emotional. Mm -hmm. I got emotional at one point doing that. I said, let me get through this. Don't cry, your mascara. <laughs> 
but it was. It, it was just a great feeling. And then to see my teammates and some of my former players that just came back, that, that really meant a lot to me. What was it like when you got the call? Um, I actually, it was in June that I knew that this was going to take place. Mm -hmm. And I was on the phone and, and Eric was with me and I couldn't, and my AD's name is Lynn as well, Lynn Robinson. And so she was calling to congratulate on the baby. So that I thought that's what the call was about. And then she's like, so how's the baby? I told her, she's like, well, Vanessa, well, I'm, I'm calling because we're going to retire your jersey. And at that moment, Nolan, I felt very old. I just had a baby, and she's talking about retiring my jersey. I'm like, I don't know. Is this Life like a slap, a slap in the face? Or, um, but no, it was. So I, like I said, I knew it was ha going to happen, and I just bust out in the tears right then. Mm. Well, you're making a return to your home state, your hometown. You grew up in Maryland. What was it like as a young girl playing basketball in Maryland? Was the sport big? Oh, yeah. I know your dad was a coach. How, how did he become involved? Well, my dad coached all of us. He was a player at San Diego State. At one point, he played in the military, and that's where he met my mom. Both of them played for the military. Hmm. Um, so he always had the coaching in his blood. He knew that if he could give his kids anything, he could give them the tools to be able to earn a scholarship because that's what he was good at basketball. So all of us played. We all played under him at some point. Hmm. And then he took over the high school where I was in my sophomore year. And I was like, I don't know if I really like this too much. i got to see you every day at school. <laughs> um, but it, that was a fantastic relationship. And Maryland is a hotbed for basketball. So it wasn't just, oh, I was the only girl in town playing. No, I played behind my two sisters who were all Americans. They were great in and of themselves. My mm -hmm. sister closest to me, uh, in, as she was 16, was the last one cut for the 84 Olympics. So I played, I had to fill some really big shoes. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I didn't know if I was as good as even they were. But the town, the city, the DMV, as they call it, was very rich in talent, and it still remains that way. I know you've gone back to supplant this roster with those from your home state in Maryland. Do you enjoy going back to recruit that area? Oh, absolutely. And to have one on my team now from the very same high school and the relationship of her coach at Largo co was a player for my dad. Mm -hmm. So that, that whole history, that relationship is rich right there. And it's also great to go back because we like, we like to tell these parents, you'll get to see more of your daughter in Maryland than you will for her being in Florida because we play up there so much. Yep. Well, speaking of history, we're at a unique time of the season because February, as always, it's crunch time in MEAC play. But it's a unique moment for someone that's in your position. We're here for the month of February and Black History Month in addition to the Play for K games as well. Mm -hmm. And we stand here, as you can see, at the Mary McLeod Bethune Foundation House. This is where uh, Mother Mary did so much for wonderful work here at BCU. Do you ever take a moment to reflect? And, and when you see that Bethune across your jersey, to think, especially at this time, because of the people like Miss Mary, what she was able to do, to forge opportunities to lead you where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a humbling, it's a humbling thing to know that you stand on the shoulders of such greatness, of a woman in a time where it wasn't popular to do what she did uh, for young African Americans. You know, and to know that we still stand on this fertile ground of enriching these young students, and not just African American students. We have students here from every continent now, which mm -hmm. is the blessing of how the country has moved forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she looks back proud that walking across her campus is such diversity. And that we as people that are able to keep her legacy moving forward mm -hmm. are able to enrich these young students' lives. You know, that they not only enter to learn, to learn, but they also depart to serve. And that's what we are here as administrators, staff, to, to help enrich these young students' lives. And yeah. you told me your mom would love to come to this house oh, when she visited. Well, every right? time she comes down here, my dad stays in the gym and she walks over here to this house. <laughs> you know, this is, it, it's monumentous that we're able to still live her legacy. Coach, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. And congratulations again. Number retired, a two-time NEC Player of the Year. She holds the blocks record. She's top 10 in rebounds, points scored. Coach, you had a great career, and we're happy to see Mount St. Mary's honor that. Thank you so much. Stay tuned to the BCU Wildcat Basketball Insider. More BCU hoops coming up next.
Coach Vanessa Blair Lewis mentioned earlier in our show, enter to learn, depart to serve. And a big reason we're able to do that at Bethune Cookman University is because of the renowned CADI network in which we give BCU students real world experience here on campus in live production, part of making this TV show you're watching right now, and much, much more. So let's go ahead and go inside the CAD lab and meet some of the stars of the CADI network. What's up, B? Hey, man, what's going on, Doc? You all right? Yeah. Hey, Marvin. Hey. This is Marvin Thompson. He is our co-production manager at the Cat Eye Network. Marvin, how long have you been a member of the Cat Eye Network at BCU? Well, currently I've been three whole years. Mm. Three long years. It was great. It was a great year. So what experiences and skills have you learned? Um, I learned a lot from editing, from technical direction, setting up, breaking down, mm -hmm. um, being the boss, part of the boss, mm. but also stuff like doing scripts and captions for different for pop, 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 pop. Mm. And how have you taken those skills and experiences and launched that into internships and jobs outside of BC? So I got to do things like I did my first internship which was at DME Sports Academy. Mm -hmm. Then I also did the um ESPN with Luke Sun and lacrosse sports transfer as assistant director and cameraman. And I also did graphics for DME. So I did a, a decent amount of outside exposure. But as for now, I'm more of a cat eye number one guy. And then you've been a big part of our football ESPN3 productions and now basketball with Flow Hoops too, right? Yes, that's the first thing I put on my demo reel. I was the first the film and technical director of ESPN3 on our new platform. And what's it been like when you have networked and talked to Bruce and other people in the industry, when they see your resume and they see some positions and experiences you've had that some people don't get to do until after school? How impressive is that? It's really impressive, especially when I did my internship in Atlanta at WSC. It was really impressed about how much stuff I did for a little guy coming from Daytona Beach or mm -hmm. from where I'm actually from the Bahamas to go up to a like a band. And so that experience, it was, it was real great. They, they loved it. That's Marvin Thompson. He's soon to graduate from Bethune Cookman University. If you're looking for someone to run your show and be an ace at production, this is the guy, Marvin Thompson from the Cat Network. We appreciate you, Marvin. Thank you. One of the founders of the Cat Eye Network, a wildcat through and through, Gary McCaskill, is still helping students learn real world experience today. Darian is in charge of a variety of things, including the production of this show. Darian, how did the Cat Eye Network start? The Cat Eye Network was an idea uh, that was uh, conceptualized by myself and Mr. Thompson, which is the AD here at Bethune Cookman University. What's it called the Cat Eye Network? I came up with a couple of uh, names, Cat Vision, uh, it was something else, BCU Multimedia, something that was very boring. So we were like, hey, what about Cat Eye? He said, hmm, that's a, that's a decent name. And then I went, made a couple of logos, came back, and I never performed. The main skill that I try to instill in them is not necessarily a skill, it's a mindset. Everything is big. No matter the pieces of equipment that you have to use or, or any of that stuff, always dream big, always try to make things bigger than what uh, you actually have at your fingertips. Uh, one of the things we like to say here is that we don't think of side of the box because we can't afford one. Um, so that's one of the things that I actually try to instill in them is to utilize all the resources that you have. YouTube, Instagram, social media platforms, all of those things are just as important as something on your television screen because it's all about influence, especially now uh, in this day and age. If somebody watching this is interested in learning more about the Cat Eye Network, how can they more? Well, you can go to our YouTube page, uh, YouTube slash Cat Eye Network. You can also uh, find me on the directory on BCU Athletics. You can hit me up with an email. Um, we're here. I mean, I'm actually kind of hard to find from what most people say because I'm always all on the go and all over the place. But hit me with an email uh, if you're interested in joining, or if you're actually a under, uh, if you're actually a student in high school and say, hey, you don't want to go, you don't feel like because Cat Eye Network is there. Hey, we offer scholarships and we, uh, things like that too. So 
I'm always looking for fresh new talent. Sign us out to our last break. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> that one is better now. <laughs> I'm Darren McCaskill, and you're watching the BCU Wildcat Basketball Insider. That's just about all the time we have for today on the BC Wildcat Basketball Insider. The Wildcats hit the road for the rest of the month of February, going up just up the street up 95 to play South Carolina State, Savannah State, and then Florida A&M. Brian, if you want to keep up with the Wildcats, how can you do it? BC Athletics, that's BC Athletics on Twitter, that's BC Athletics on Instagram, BC Athletics on the website, bcathletics.com, but also BCUWBB for the women's hoops on Twitter, BC Hoops for the men's hoops on Twitter, and then also, you know what, we still got Snapchat, BC Athletics on Snapchat. Chat, so, you know, you can follow us there, too. But BC Athletics is everywhere. That is your one-stop shop for all BC Athletics. Brian, it's been an absolute blast. Thanks for being with us today. Always a pleasure, Nolan. That's Brian Harvey, the assistant AD for communications at BCU. I'm Nolan Alexander, the voice of the Wildcats. Stay tuned. Our next episode continues to give you an inside look at Bethune-Cookman men's and women's basketball. Thanks for joining us today on the BCU Wildcat Basketball Insider.